Math 142, we're going to take a look at section 5.4. We're doing just right triangle trig now. Uh, good old-fashioned SOHCAHTOA, uh, like you know it from high school geometry. So, uh, as you know, we have this mnemonic device, uh, SOHCAHTOA, which lets us think about how um, angles and sides are related to each other in, in a triangle. And just, just for our reference point we have some angle t we might call it alpha we might call it beta we might call it theta but whatever angle we're at relative to it we can name the sides of the triangle now the side that's opposite the uh, right angle is always the hypotenuse that is fixed uh, now the other thing depends on what angle we're at so we're here at this angle t and we can say well that side's opposite and then this side right here is adjacent. So what the Sokotoa helps us remember is sine of the angle is the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, cosine of the angle is the ratio ka adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of the angle is oa opposite over adjacent. And I just want to take a moment and think about each of these, these trig functions. They're, they're functions. They do things with inputs and outputs. So we have some machine that's a trig function. And what it does is it inputs an angle, right, like sine of t or cosine of t. What it outputs is a ratio. And that ratio, depending on what the function is, uh, opposite over hypotenuse or adjacent over hypotenuse and so on. You know, we've also talked about um, cosecant, secant, and tangent and how those are the reciprocals to these. So since sine is one opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Remember that first letter changes, sine to cosine, cosine to secant. And then the tangent one, well, I wrote tangent, should be cotangent. It's kind of obvious, tangent to cotangent. Adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine, so secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent. And similarly, a cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. So um, let's think about sine and cosine right now, maybe a little bit about tangent, but really I'm going to dig into sine and cosine a bit. And I'm just going to make a right triangle drawn as poorly as I can possibly draw it. Uh, alpha, beta, there's a right angle. Let's say this side is 8, this side is 15, and this side is 17. Now, first off, I'm just wondering, is this actually a right triangle? And I can check it by using Pythagorean theorem, right? I can say like 15 squared uh, plus 8 squared. Oops, I forgot to square my 15. And if I square root that, I better get 17. Yep, cosine of alpha b. Well, cosine, so ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So it would be 15 seventeenths. And how about cosine of beta? Now with beta, notice it's adjacent, is adjacent to the angle, right? I have to fix what angle my input is and adjacent over hypotenuse. So Let's go back to this first one. Cosine of alpha, that was this adjacent side, 15, over that hypotenuse. So I'm here and here. Interestingly, what would sine of beta be? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It's the same thing as cosine of alpha. And notice if I say, sine of alpha opposite Jason, I'm sorry, hypotenuse, is the same, same thing as cosine of uh, the other angle. Now this is kind of interesting to me. So let's think about these, alpha, these um, alpha and beta. If I were to add those two angles together, well, I know all the, all the angles in a triangle is 180, but this is 90. So these two together must add to 90. Those are called complementary angles. And what's kind of, you kind of see it in the name, sine 
is one of our operators. The other operator is called cosine, if we, if we write it out. And it's actually the complement of sine because if you take the other angle that's 90 degrees, you know, like 90 minus that they add to 90, you'll get the same angle. That gives us some good relationships. Uh, cosine of some angle is the same as sine of 90 or pi over 2 minus that angle. Uh, similarly, sine has the same relationship back to cosine, right? So if I know what cosine of pi over 3 is, that's going to be the same as sine of what? Well, let's see, pi over 2 minus pi over 3. I'm subtracting fractions. Let me make a common denominator, which would be sixths, right? So I'm going to multiply this one by 3 over 3, this one by 2 over 2. So I've got 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 6. Go back and forth uh, between those representations. If we know cosine of something, we know sine of something else is equal to it. Uh, or it might be the same thing if they're both 45. Here is another thing to think about. So on both of these problems, I am going to find the value of the missing, uh, the unknowns. So like how long is A, how long is C? knowing that that's seven. So let's just look at A on this one. So we know we've got angle 30, and we've got the side that's adjacent, and we've got the side that's opposite. To me, that screams tangent, TOA, right? Tangent. So I know that tangent of 30 degrees should be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, tangent of 30, I know the value of that. Either I have it memorized, or I've got it in my unit circle. And let's see, unit circle, 30 degrees tangent is 1, one half over root 3 over 2. So it's 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. Okay, that's good to, good to remember. So if I want to solve this for 7, I could multiply both sides by A. Um, I'm Trying to I'm trying to solve for um, I'm trying to solve for a, but I'm trying to get it all get a all alone. So let me do this. I've got a times tangent of 30 degrees equals seven. And now, how about I divide by tangent of 30 degrees? Still working to get a all alone. So a equals seven divided by tangent of 30 degrees. And so this is just seven divided by some number, and I know what that number is. It's one over root three, which is the same as, uh, sorry, that should be root three over three, root three over three. Um, so let me, I'll use this form. This form will be easier for me to use. Seven divided by one over root three. And when I divide by a fraction, the name is multiplying by its reciprocal. So that a value is seven root three. And notice I could solve um, C for C similarly. I've got opposite, but now I've got hypotenuse with it. Opposite over hypotenuse. So, so sine. So I know that sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, 7 over C. Do the same sort of uh, manipulation I did before. Multiply both sides by C. Divide by sine of 30 degrees. Put in my work so I'm pretty comfortable knowing that this is one half. So I've got C7 uh, divided by one half, same as multiplying by two, so that would be 14. And you know, on problems like this, I'm going to leave these answers exact. I'm not going to uh, rush off and put them in my calculator, I don't need to. A couple more like this. Uh, let's say I wanted to find B. Well, let's see, adjacent and opposite. Gives me tangent, so I'd say tangent of 45 degrees TOA is opposite over adjacent. Solve for B, multiply by 12. I know that uh, tangent of 45 is 1. That's nice. So B is 12. 
which makes sense to me because if this is a 45, 45, 90, this side's going to be the same as this side because they're opposite the same angle. And then to get C, um, I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. That's going to be, that screams cosine to me. Cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, multiply by C, divide by cos 45. Cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, which is the same as 1 over root 2. And I'm going to use the 1 over root 2 form of it just because it's a little easier to divide by. 12 over 1 over root 2. Divided by a fraction, same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so this should be 12 root 2. All right, give all of those problems a try. Post questions in the forum um, or message me with them.